It is the 1950s in America, and most Americans are scared to their very cause at the horrifying prospect of possible nuclear annihilation. The Russians are putting on massive parades as a display of power showing off their latest and greatest machines capable of wiping out entire civilizations at the push of a button. Senator Joseph McCarthy is holding Senate hearings trumpeting the false narrative that the entire U.S. government has been infiltrated by communist agents. School children are trained daily to duck and cover in the event a nuclear bomb explodes nearby, as if hiding under a desk or in a closet could possibly thwart the effects of a nuclear explosion. American lawmakers and the President know that they have quite a quagmire on their hands, and they need to institute policies, laws, and tax dollars to ensure the continuity of government. In the event such a horrific catastrophe as a nuclear missile strike takes place on American soil, their initial foray into this dilemma is the creation of the North American Aerospace Defense Command, or NORAD, as it is commonly referred to, which is housed within the solid granite topography of Cheyenne Mountain in Colorado. But this location's function is to monitor, track, and detect any airborne threats and plays no role in the continuity of government, so to speak. For this purpose, they will need additional facilities to be built, and these facilities cannot be simple government cinder block or concrete buildings, but must be capable of withstanding a nuclear attack. And for this, they will need to go deep. Underground, deep. But they also do not want these facilities to stick out like a sore thumb, so they must be creative with the design and placement of these facilities. They cannot be too far away from Washington, D.C., since travel time to them may well be quite critical in the event they may need to be used. One such facility that was created during this period in the 1950s and 1960s was the Greenbrier Hotel located in the beautiful Allegheny Mountains in West Virginia. This was and is an existing hotel, and the government funded a massive expansion which included an entire new wing. And far beneath this new wing was a facility fully capable of housing the entirety of the U.S. Senate as well as all the members of Congress, plus all the support staff that would be required to ensure the facility ran smoothly and could sustain itself for at least two months all on its own. The well-kept secret of this facility was discovered, quite by chance by an intrepid reporter in the 1980s, and its use as a secret underground bunker came to a halt shortly thereafter. Plans had already been underway for a new and more advanced facility, and one that was a bit closer to Washington, and the location for this facility is located in the Blue Ridge Mountains in the Commonwealth of Virginia, and is known as Mount Weather. Statistically, this facility is a mere 51 miles away from Washington, and a short helicopter flight can transport all the approved personnel and the senators from all 50 states, as well as all the members of Congress. It has a continuous staff on site 24-7, and is actually co-managed by the Federal Emergency Management Agency, or FEMA, and is ready day or night to provide a facility fully capable of running the government away from Washington, D.C. The facility itself, which already existed, and at one time served as the Summer White House for Calvin Coolidge, was a massive undertaking and encompasses an above-ground facility resembling a somewhat typical mountain resort, but deep beneath this resort if a facility of massive proportions. The above-ground facility covers an area of 434 acres, and the underground facility has a square footage footprint of more than 600,000 square feet. That is truly massive. It contains within its layout the various facilities and machinery to provide clean drinking water as well as all the required machinery for sewage disposal of bodily waste. It contains its own hospital complete with a maternity ward for any emergency or regular medical needs that may occur during the time that it may be occupied. 
All the required electricity is generated on site with the use of internal generators, sheathed and shielded and guarded against any EMT threats, and has a state-of-the-art broadcasting center so that the inhabitants can transmit and address the American people. And it even has a crematorium in the event any of the residents or staff should pass on while within the facility. The facility can accommodate up to 200 people for over a month and has additional cots and bunks capable of housing up to 2,000 civilians and military personnel. And with additional supplies, it can sustain itself for as long as may be needed. This truly is a wonder of technology. The main drawback for the average citizen is that this facility has a very limited and very exclusive guest list and the chances of either you or I being invited to wait out the nuclear apocalypse, or the zombie apocalypse for that matter, are very slim indeed, if not entirely impossible. However, one can take comfort in the fact that if the unthinkable should occur, the government has put in place a facility and the means with which to run it, so that the governmental leaders can carry on the day-to-day -day business of running the government albeit from a subterranean dwelling. I would again like to thank you all for sharing this story with me, and please be sure to like and subscribe, as that this helps us a great deal. And I shall see you next time. This is Professor Poppycock, signing off.